So at the moment, this code that I've been writing is been in this JavaScript file. Let's back up a moment to think in, the, in a meta sort of way, beyond things. When we were working with Notepad++, our project was in a folder, and we had like three or four files. This now is a much more complex project. So I'll still be putting my code into the network folder, but it's a more complex project. So uh, I, in my case, have put the project on the desktop. And I'll put this example code if you want it at, in the folder. But again, we're going to start over again next time. This is still just a testing project. But that now includes all of the code. And at the moment, up to this far, the app has gone up to about 10.6 megabytes. So eventually, when I put my code in the network folder, in there we will have a project, and in there a test, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and then the WW folder. So if we're really only editing the JavaScript file for efficiency, I could only put the JavaScript file. But if you take only this JavaScript file, obviously it's not complete. It's got to be this JavaScript file in the scripts folder, in the WW folder, in the test folder, in the test folder, in your other folder. So I'll remind us of that as we do it, but just keep that in mind because what's happened on previous semesters, once we start to deal with a big project, I put this project, this file, into the network folder, and because this project is made out of 1,341 subfiles, it takes a moment for me to simply put it into the folder. And what people always do is, before mine finishes copying over, people are already copying it to their flash drive and they get an incomplete project. And then they say, why is not my project not working? And then I check, and their project has 400 files, and it's supposed to have 1,400. So I'll remind us of this. But when I copy my work into the network folder, wait for my bar to complete, and then copy it over. Also, when we start next Thursday and next Tuesday, etc. If you want to take my project from the network folder, probably other people want to do it also. And a lot of people then are going to want to copy from the network folder my project of 1,341 files. And I've seen it, that it slows down when everyone's copying the project. I highly recommend, if your project is working, keep it safe in your flash drive and, and you know use it. You don't have to take my file every time. And what I will be doing, I guess, to kind of cover both bases, or all the bases, I'm going to put the whole project folder, and I'm also going to upload only the project file, perhaps, that was changed. I'm going to upload it into the network folder, index.js. I'm going to put the date on it, index 2017-07-11. You, of course, hopefully, can figure out that if you simply drop in my copy of index 2017 711 it will not work because the project expects index.js so you're just going to rename it to index.js yes more effort more things to worry about and do you can handle it your app developers so let's continue for the moment then we'll do the lab time in a little bit i want to do one more thing and then we'll do lab time We've got, this, we've got this button that says, click me, and it does something. For fun, let's set up a way, how can I take a photo? So here's an example that definitely, if you've got a virtual device, you're going to be disappointed. But if you've got a real device, you're going to take a photo with your real device. We're going to create another button in the index file for the camera. Then we're going to write JavaScript code to make it work. We'll go back to the project. We've got a button for click me. We will uh, create another button. Call it camera ID BTN camera. so that the camera suddenly doesn't just automatically turn on, we are setting up a button. If we want to display this picture on screen, we need a placeholder, an image placeholder, source of nothing, and then ID of my picture.
Oh, this is fun. Uh, IntelliSense here is telling me, hey, there's a tip. You just wrote some code. Here's a tip for you. Insert width and height. That's nice. But uh, anyway, I've got a button to take the photo. Then I've got a placeholder of an image. Display this image. Source is set to nothing because it's going to come from the camera that I'm about to use. But it has an ID so that it understands. Take the photo, and then in this image, display this photo. In this empty placeholder, display this photo. In the JavaScript, we need to do something very similar as in create an element, an event listener, a function. So var l btn camera equals document dot get element btn camera. We've got a brand new button. We've got a brand new button that we need to make into a JavaScript object so we can use it. So we get it by its ID. Then we need to have an event listener waiting for a click on that new element. BTN camera, it knows that now, that's nice. Dot add event listener on click function camera. Or we'll do get picture semicolon. Create the object, we set up the event listener to run a function, we will define the function. We can do it before or after that. I'll just do it before because I'm already close to that area. Function fn get picture. OK, so none of that that we've written there is anything special yet. This is plain old JavaScript for a button to do something. The something is going to be then Cordova code. The something is to use the camera plugin to use the code that Cordova teaches us, the Cordova website, to um, take a picture. Uh, we need to do two things write the JavaScript code to access the camera and activate the plugin to let us write the code to take the photo. So before we write the code to take the photo, we need to go back to the config XML and activate the camera plugin. We, write, we'll, we can write the code perfectly, but it will not work because we did not activate the feature to let this app take a photo. These, you can think of them also as permissions. Permissions. Do you ever download apps? And it says, this app would like to access your camera. This app would like to access your GPS. You allow those permissions for your app to do that. These are the permissions that we're going to ask. Eventually, when someone is going to download our app, it'll say, this app would like to access your camera. This app would like to read your contacts. So let's go to the camera here and add. So this will add the ability for us to write the proper JavaScript code so that we can access the camera. So I've got the camera plug-in, and I need to understand how to take a photo back at the Cordova website. Mm. 
you go back to the Cordova website, we have a chapter on the camera. Scrolling down, there will be an example. If you just keep scrolling down eventually, navigator.camera.getpicture. So eventually, if you scroll down, you'll see example navigator dot camera dot get picture. I'm going to copy that. And in my index.js, I'm going to paste that. So with Cordova, we'll see this a lot. Navigator dot something dot something. Navigator dot camera dot get picture. All right, so we have a camera success, a camera error, camera options. error on success. Under camera, and you have to scroll down to the other camera spot. So the, um, the get picture is going to either successfully uh, take the photo, or there will be an error, and you can supply options. There's a callback, a function, if there's a success. There's a function if there's an error, and there are options that you can provide. There's a more complete example over here somewhere. OK, so what it's saying is here's the example. Mm. Uh, camera callback, image data. Um, this is trying to say there's going to be either a successful camera capture or a failure. But these are functions. Uh, for the moment, these camera options, I'm not going to set any extra camera options, so I'm going to remove that. We need to then define function camera success. And function camera error. <coughs> so the really simple part is get picture. The complex part is what happens after we get the picture. There's either going to be a success that we got the picture or a failure to get the picture. <coughs> no extra options. I took those out. The way we explain or further code what is a success, we define a function. We define another function there. This has an image, 
that that we captured successfully or we have an error that we captured wrong and that if there was a problem For the moment, I'll do console log. We have a placeholder, but I'll just set it out, send it out to the console to show you something interesting. Image and console log error. So it's not going to display on screen yet. It's going to display to the console. Uh, technically, this photo that we capture, it's technically data. Um, so in the console, we're going to display the data of the image, not really on screen yet. Putting quotations here would show the word image in the console. It's a string. With quotes, it'll be literally written image. I'm trying to display. This is sort of like a temporary variable, a container. So I'm displaying what is the image data and display that in the console. Not the word error, but what's inside of that container, that temporary variable. What is that error message? what is that image displayed in the console. I can test it at this point. The first time I did this build, it took a couple of minutes. And then now here, it's taking a lot faster. But it still takes a moment. It's just the, that's just the nature of it. It has to compile the app, but not every single aspect of it. So I got a brand new button that says camera. I press it, and then you see here, there's something in the camera. Um, I can tap to take the photo. You heard the click. So it took the photo. Um, on the device here, it's got either accept it or cancel it. If I click cancel, it will, um, it will trigger the, the camera cancel. Do you see here in my console output? Camera cancel. That's the error message. The JavaScript of console.error inside of that temporary variable had the message camera canceled because I canceled it in the JavaScript console it said camera canceled I'm gonna try it again if I do the turn on the camera it turns on the camera I'm gonna tap to take a photo took the photo this time I'm going to accept it in the output it saved my graphic somewhere on my flash driver somewhere. And that's the part up here. On a successful image capture, display what was that message. And the message is, you save this file in your storage, blah, 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 in the cache, that graphic. Obviously, I would want it to display on screen. But this sort of like proof of concept here is what I want to show for the moment. Backing up, this test file is a test file. I'm not even going to keep it. We're not going to use it again on, on Thursday. You can keep it to kind of you know, understand what it is. But I wanted to spend a couple of days on just the nuts and bolts of Visual Studio, getting through the process of running your device, doing the, 
compilation, maybe checking the console or whatever. This test project, I'm going to put it in the network folder, but not really necessary because I'm not going to start with it next time. Um, I think I'll stop at this time. Yeah, we have a placeholder to display the image, but it needs a little bit more setup to display the actual image on screen. You can see what it is further in the documentation here. Get element by ID. What's the name of that ID? Set its image source to the image. We could do it. But I kind of want to lead you this far that if it worked, it is kind of working. If it didn't, we'll do some lab time. But this is the nature of what we're going to do a lot in this class. There are all of these possibilities that we can do here because of Cordova, make dialog boxes, check GPS coordinates, um, load media or record audio. We have all of these pieces of the puzzle. <clears throat> Just because you learn and read all of this doesn't mean you're ready to make your app. You need that idea. We have the idea we started last time a database that saves comic books or a database that saves anything. We're doing the example comic books. We're going to get back to that project. We've created a whole login screen. We're going to log in to save the name of a comic, the number of it, the year of it, you know, that data, and maybe scan the barcode. Scan a photo of the barcode. So there's these pieces to make an app. And we're going to put them together to make the app. And it is a lot to kind of try to digest at the beginning. But this whole part, part two, is about this nuts and bolts of it. How does Visual Studio work? What's the code? What am I doing? And then as we go further, putting the app together. The app itself is not going to be that complex. What's going to be complex is setting up your environment and writing the right code and such. So I'm going to stop the main lecture. But general questions on things we kind of looked at today?